Hi, welcome to the first uh, part of our video tutorials for the Barcelona Pavilion uh, AutoCAD 2D drawing exercise. Uh, you can see here on my screen I've got uh, the icon for the software and the folder that's got the materials we'll be using for the tutorial. Okay, so we launch the software first. Double click on the icon. Uh, AutoCAD can take a while to load. Um, I've been using it already today, so it's going to load reasonably quickly. Uh, you may find it takes a fair while for the software to initialize. Okay, now because there is a lot of layer names to deal with uh, to get control over the drawing, I've put these into a file already and we're going to use that as the base for our drawing. So you would term this a template. Okay, so we'll open a file and I'd like you to use the BP template drawing. Click open. Okay, and the first thing we'll do is save this to another file name. So, so we can either type in a command or we can use the red letter A here to access the save as command and we'll rename this to bp underscore 2d exercise and the software adds the .dwg to the file name. Okay, now we're in a 2D drafting and annotation workspace. This icon gives me access to the different workspaces. If I wanted to make a 3D model, I would change to the 3D modeling workspace. We'll stick with 2D drafting and annotation. The toolbar, the, the command prompt is this device here, and this is where we enter commands into the system and also look at reports that come back. So I'm going to pick this up and dock this, which is called parking it. I'm going to park it at the bottom of the screen. So I pick it up with the little dots here, click and hold your left mouse button, and then you can drag that downwards. When it looks like it's expanded, you can let go and the command prompt will appear. I prefer to give myself a bit of space in the command prompt so I can see what's coming and what's just happened. So I expand that to show three or four lines above the place where I actually type the commands. So AutoCAD is one of a few pieces of software nowadays that can be command line driven. We can type the commands in. It's a good way of learning the names of the commands. If you know where the commands are, then using the ribbons is another method. I prefer the type in method, but we will use some from the ribbons where it's more appropriate. Things like the layer commands and the properties are easier to, to manipulate from the, the ribbons. Okay, the, the screen's showing a grid in the background here. It's, it's nothing we're going to snap onto or use, so I'm going to turn the grid off using this controller down here. This area here has generally got the helpers that we need for accuracy in the software. So I click once and the grid disappears. Okay, now I don't know how much space I've actually got to work in here. This could be a few millimeters, it could be a few miles. I really don't know. So I'm just going to draw a diagonal line to set up screen area for me to work in. So I could use the line command from here or I could type in my command at the command prompt. I'll let you choose which way you prefer to work but I will generally type them in so people can see what happens on the video then. They can read what I put in in the command prompt. So I've clicked in the command prompt I then just need the single letter at the start of the command name which is just the letter L so L and then I press the enter key so that's the return key on your keyboard. It's then asking me where I want to start the line from I'm going to begin at 0 comma 0 press enter again 
Okay, you can see I've got a free diagonal line coming from somewhere off the screen. I don't know where exactly it's coming from. That doesn't matter. Now I want to tell it where the diagonally opposite corner is going to be. So I type in the, the at symbol and then an x distance, so it's 48700, then a comma, and then the y distance, 21800. Then press enter to set the line. It's wanting to carry on the line, so I press enter again to stop the command. Now I can set the, the screen size by double clicking my middle mouse button. That's called a zoom extends. Okay, so the line now is going, is fitting exactly inside my screen. I could do with being a bit further away, just a small amount. So I can roll the mouse back one click. Use the middle mouse button, roll it back one click. Holding the middle mouse button allows me to reposition which is called panning. Okay, so that's us set this, the area that we need to work in. The, the plinth for the building is going to fit in this area. I can now delete this line, so I click on it and then press the delete key. Okay, this video is only going to cover the first two portions of the tutorials. So this is sheets BP2D1 BP2D2. So we've just got to the end of BP2D1 and we're about to start BP2D2. So have the sheet available for reference as we work. Okay, we'll take things slowly and stay in simple steps and hopefully you'll come along with me for the ride. Okay, now we, we split things up in drawings onto what are called layers and this gives us control uh, over you know complexity but also control over printing and how we want a drawing to look so the color of a layer can be translated to a different pen thickness when it appears on paper we'll cover this in a lot more detail because it's one of the fundamentals of the software and it's one of the trickier things to get to master but once you do your drawings will be clean and crisp and people will be able to understand because they will see a hierarchy in the line work. So we're going to change layers now from layer 0 which is standard in every AutoCAD drawing we're going to change to a layer called 2D plinth. So I drop the list down using the arrow and I look for the layer 2D plinth. To make this the current layer you click the word 2D plinth. So everything I draw from now on will be on this layer and it will be this color. When we get to other parts of the building, we'll change layers accordingly. Okay, so we're going to do this in a few different methods so you can see how the drawing lines can be controlled. So we'll start off with the oldest method. Okay, and this is where we're going to specify a distance and an angle for the line. So we'll, we'll start off at 0, 0. So we want our line command again. So it's L return. And we'll start at 0, 0. OK, the line wants to go freely anywhere. That's no good for, for drawing buildings. We need horizontal lines and vertical lines. So we get square corners. OK, so we're going to force it to draw exactly horizontally to the to the right and this is direction zero so we type in at then the distance three six five zero zero then we want an angle so we use the less than symbol and then we put in the direction bearing i.e. the angle we want to move in so this is direction zero so it's at 36500 zero, zero, less than symbol 0 press the enter key so it's an exactly horizontal line 
So that was line A on the sheet BP2D2. Let's draw on line B, let's keep the command running. So we type in the at symbol. We're going up 950, and this time the direction is 90. So at 950, less than symbol, 90. We're going to come this way now to the left for line C. So it's at 2800, less than symbol. The direction now is going to the left, which is direction 180. Return. Do you see the shape starting to match the handout? Right, we'll change methods now. We'll just tell it the angle and then we'll put in the distance. So it's slightly different. So miss out the at symbol this time and we just go straight to the angle. So it's less than symbol 90. Move your mouse slightly and you'll see that you're locked in the vertical direction, in the 90 direction. And the distance is the same again as it was at C, so it's 2800. Zero, zero. Okay, let's keep going. We're on to line E now. So it's angle symbol, direction zero. Move your mouse slightly, you'll see you're locked in. And the distance this time, 15,000. One more using that method, and then we'll go to the easiest method of all. So it's the less than symbol, 90 again, because we're going upwards. Move your mouse slightly, and we're going to go upwards in this direction, 1, 2, 4, 0, 0. Right. Now we were using these angles so that we got the directions we wanted. We could put ortho on. This will restrict our movement to left and right and up and down. So put ortho on, and you'll see it's locked. So there's no need to type any angles now. All I need to do is drag to set the direction I want to go in, and then tell it how far. So you drag, let go of the mouse, and type in the distance for this one, 39300. Return. I want to go upwards now. So I set my direction. And the distance this time, 5650, return. I want to go to the left again by 9400. Zero, zero. And then I should be directly above where I started. Now, if I had managed to get around all the way in one go, I could use the C option. You can see it here, C for close. If I, wasn't, if I hadn't gone all the way around in one go, then I'd be better to use an object snap. And this is a, a, point, a position on the geometry. So if you move your mouse close to where we started, you can see an object snap shows up. It's telling me the end point has been found. So I, I make sure I can see the name of the object snap and then left click my mouse and press enter to finish the command. So we've got all the way around there, nice and clean. The last item we need to draw at this point is the steps. So let's zoom in a bit closer. I could roll the mouse, hold the middle mouse and pan. There's lots of other ways of zooming as well. If you type Z and return twice, you then get a magnifying glass. If you hold the left mouse button, you can zoom in and out in a, in a more controlled way. If you let go, click again, let go, click again, you can see you can move in and out much more smoothly. The middle mouse button still operates as pan. Press escape when you're happy. We now want to create parallel copies of this line to form the steps that lead us from ground up to the plinth. So we use a command called offset for this. The icon looks like this, but I'm going to type it in with the letter O and return. 
it's asking me now for the gap that I want to have between the lines. Okay, and the distance is 375 and enter. I now pick the line I want to copy, move to the side I want to copy it on, and left click again. And let the command carry on. Go back to the newest line, left click, move right, click again. Left click, move right, click again. Keep doing that until we get seven copies of the line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Press escape to stop the offset command. I call it a sticky command, it doesn't want to finish. So escape gets us back to where we were. And do you remember the how we see the whole screen, the whole drawing? It's a zoom extents. You can either double click the mouse button or type Z return E return. A little click, roll the mouse button back so we can see the plan. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too stressful. That's your first bit of AutoCAD drawing complete.